Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Color Mixing with Chris. I'm Chris Arpin. We are here in the booth at Createx Colors and uh, we had kind of an interesting request. That's kind of why we chose it. Uh, somebody requested to do uh, British Racing Green, a color called British Racing Green. So I'm probably pretty familiar with that. It's kind of a popular color, but they wanted to do it in a candy. So that was different. To me, that was a little different. You typically wouldn't see that. Um, so we are going to make British Racing Green. Um, so we're going to start right off the bat. Uh, we'll kind of go over what we have and in terms of what we're going to do. I have my three substrates, my, my base colors again. Uh, you guys have seen the other videos that we do. Um, this is kind of the staples and what we're using or what we're spraying over, but I kind of got rid of two, two colors for this one. Just going to want to highlight something a little different. So typically we do gold uh, and then we have, we've also done a white. So we've done a metallic gold base is kind of a staple and then we do metallic white. Um, a lot of times the metallic white and our silver sealer, this is our 6013 silver sealer, they're really close, metallic white and silver, um, so it's really not a huge contrast. Um, and this time, instead of doing gold, I opted to make, if you guys have seen some of the other candy mixing videos, the other color mixing videos, we did a root beer a while back. We did a kind of a letdown on mixing a root beer color with our dirt track brown. And this was a sealer color that I mixed, which is actually our 6013, our silver sealer, two parts silver to one part of our green, our wicked green, and that was it. So we got this really cool green metallic color. Uh, it's kind of hard to see now, but if this was clear coated, it's got a lot of, lot of nice glitter, real similar to our silver. Um, so we're going to use that, we're going to substitute that for the gold in this case, and then we have our charcoal metallic. right? So this is, again, this has kind of become another staple, really cool, really nice, clean darker shade metallic, doesn't have a cast, a one color or the other, it's a very neutral color, so it's a great base color for a really darker candy. So, moving on to the actual candy, right? Um, if you guys are familiar with our candy line, you know, we have two green candies, right? We have a poison green, which is a really light, light shade, kind of a lemony, kind of electric green. Uh, and then we have our emerald green, which is way darker, uh, and it's a little more blue shade. So we really don't have anything kind of in between and kind of one of the characteristics of that British racing green color, and there's a lot of different versions, if you guys are familiar, just about every European car manufacturer now has a British racing green color. So we are uh, kind of picking in the middle of the two. So our British racing green that we're doing today, I already have in the bottle, uh, is kind of a blend. So rather than starting with the emerald green uh, and trying to adjust that color, kind of opted to go in a different direction with that. Only, again, if you've seen the other videos that we've done, I really talk about making the mix easy and consistent and, and being repeatable, again, for that consistency and be able to make a small amount or a large amount. Uh, and sometimes having a multitude of candies that you have to kind of mix and, you know, one and a half percent and all, it, it just kind of throws that ratio off. So rather than starting with the emerald green and trying to adjust that color, I'm starting with our carob blue and our tequila yellow believe it or not. So the blue is very clean. It's a very clean blue. It's very simple in terms of the mixture of that particular blue. And the tequila yellow is, is close to that as well in terms of it's, there's not a lot going on with it. It's just a darker, uh, dirtier, I guess you could say yellow, right? It's like a brown yellow. So if I was using a lighter yellow, like our lemon yellow, it's very weak in nature. and It would take a whole lot to change the color and you still wouldn't get that darker tone. So again, I try to keep it simple with really two candies. And what I ended up with was two parts of our tequila yellow to one part of our carob blue. It makes a really nice color in terms of that. It's almost a little olive drab, but a little bit uh, richer and, uh, and slightly clean, brighter in terms of that green. So it's really not like that military olive drab color, but it has a little bit of the tendency of that, which, which uh, the British racing green of, of years ago, the, the original, um, it it kind of has that, that yellow kind of green cast to it. So it's a very cool color. So we're kind of going towards that mixture. Like I said, there's a lot of different versions. There's even metallic versions of that color now. Just about every European car manufacturer has it. But we're, we're kind of going after that OG British Racing Green. So what I'll do is I already have the two mixed. So this is kind of the, the base that I said. So I already have it mixed in my bottle. So it's two parts to one part, right? So two parts tequila yellow, one part carrot blue. And we're going to go ahead and mix it right up. So anytime you guys know, if you're familiar, if you've watched these videos before, 4050, that's our medium, right? That's our mixing base for our candy. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this one at six to one, which again is kind of my standard. If you want it to go a little bit lighter, you can go eight to one, um, but I'm gonna go with six to one on this. 
So I'm going to go right about to there, to the four. And I have a strainer. Again, if you guys have watched these other videos, strain your candies, right? So this is a 125 micron strainer, really, really fine. Only because you get dried paint in the cap and the lid and the top and you just cheap insurance. Anything in your paint, you guys are familiar with spraying candy, you know that it magnifies any kind of dirt, anything that you might have, any kind of dust, it just doesn't go away. So if you spray over, if you have it in your candy, it's gonna look like a dirty spot in your paint. So really cheap insurance, strain your candies. So I went to four. I'm gonna go to the four line here. And that is six to one. So get this guy out of my way. I'm gonna mix this up. And again, at that six to one ratio, you could really briefly talk about reduction. I'm gonna use a full size spray gun to spray this. So with a six to one mix, uh, I'm gonna, I'll get this mixed, I'll show you. Really good here. Be sure when you guys are mixing, you can see the blue in the front of this cup here, that's the 4050. You really wanna make sure that that's totally mixed in. We recommend mixing for about two minutes and then letting this sit for about 10 before you're ready to spray to really let everything kind of just marry together, get a nice even mix of paint. But I'm gonna show you guys what we're looking for for viscosity because we still get a lot of questions. Everybody was really happy that I showed you off the stick. So this is six to one. I'm spraying this out of a one, two. I am not gonna reduce this. This is kind of right where I want it to be in terms of the consistency, the flow, right? It's not hanging off the stick, it's not dripping, it's not that thin where it's dripping, but it's pretty even nice even flow off the stick. And that's exactly what you're looking for when you're spraying candy. It's again, very exacting when you apply this stuff. So spraying candy has gotta be super, super methodical with your approach to spraying. So really the viscosity of your candy is kind of key in terms of how you apply. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. If it's too thin, it's gonna look real spotty. It's gonna skate out. And if it's, if it's too heavy, you're gonna be really choked up and it's gonna affect the, the pattern of the gun. And it's gonna make your life more difficult when you're spraying. So, we are going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna get the booth running, and when we come back, we'll start spraying some British Racing Green. All right, guys, we are back. Booth is running. It's been actually about 15 minutes that this has sitting, been uh, sitting once it was mixed, which is even actually better. So we're gonna go ahead and do first coat over the silver. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll do the silver, and then I'll grab the green one, and then I'll grab the charcoal. So I'll just keep on spraying, you guys can see. So this is coat number one. Hey guys, welcome back. We're all done spraying candy. When we broke off, I went ahead and continued on, did two more coats of our candy mix over our bases. And actually when I finished these three, uh, I was kind of looking at it and I'm like, man, the color is looking really good. And, and I kind of regretted the fact that we did not do a gold base. Uh, so I went ahead and I did, sprayed another shape and I did some gold, our Wicked Metallic Gold. And I put four coats of our candy mix over the top of that. And one of the reasons uh, is because the green and gold do really well together. They, they kind of have a nice kind of a, a look. And uh, the other reason being that really, if you wanted to call it candy apple for that true candy apple, the technical term, uh, it has to be over a gold base. So anything other than a gold base is just candy over silver, candy over charcoal, candy over whatever. It's just candy over. But in order to call it candy apple, technically, uh, industry standard is to be over a gold. So I went ahead and did a gold base. So real quick, before we uh, get these in some clear coat, uh, I want to kind of walk through real quick and show you guys what these look like. So this is four coats over everything. We'll start with the lightest one, which is our sealer silver. And even without clear, these are looking really good, right? So this is our sealer silver or four coats. This is our metallic gold or four coats. And next up is the that kind of that gold, the color keyed base, or the, the green, I'm sorry, that we made, which was our sealer silver with a little bit of wicked green in there. 
That looks really, really cool. And actually, this one was probably the most, obviously, the forgiving to spray in terms of nice and even application. I probably could even stop at three coats, but it looked really, really good. Um, really cool here. This is that, that green, again, that, that metallic green base that we made. And then last but not least, our metallic charcoal. And again, really clean, but obviously, it just kind of gives a darker look, so it's a little bit darker for that candy. Uh, but one of the things I do like, I mentioned it again uh, with that charcoal, is it's just a very clean, uh, darker base coat. There's no pearl in there that kind of has a funky shift that might kind of pick up a, a weird color. It's just a really clean, darker base. Uh, works really well if you want to push that color a little bit darker. So, like I mentioned, we'll go ahead and get some 2K clear on this. I'm always going to recommend uh, over our candies a 2K clear coat. So we'll, we'll mix up a little clear, we'll get these sprayed, and uh, when we come back, we'll hopefully have some sunlight outside and we can check them out out in the sun. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we are out in front in the sun. We got to manage to grab a little bit of sunlight. So real quick, again, outside in the sun, you really get the full effect of what the ground coat is doing with those base coats, those, those first coats that we put down. So starting from my left here, this is the green over silver sealer. Oop. <laughs> this is over gold. This is over the green sealer mix. And then this is over our charcoal metallic. So again, it illustrates what you're able to do. I'll grab this one one more time. Obviously, the silver is going to be the lightest value. The, the gold has, the, has a little bit more of that warm kind of a touch to it. And then the charcoal gives us a dark. And the green is actually kind of nicely in between. And, and again, if you were looking for something that's going to cover really fast and, and uh, probably two coats of candy over that green, and you're going to kind of eliminate the issue of maybe having a little bit of streakiness that would be inherent with spraying a candy if, if you weren't super familiar. So Color King, in this particular case, definitely the way to go, especially with a darker, richer candy like we mentioned. So. I think that wraps it up for Color Mixing with Chris. I'm Chris Harpin, Create Text Colors. Thanks for checking us out, and we will see you guys next time.